Can graphic design and illustration change behavior? That is a big question. In short, I agree with Professor Jorge Frascara. Yes. Let us think about it in the small things, the small changes we do every day. Design and illustration is fairly ubiquitous in modern daily life for a lot of the world's population. They are not passive decoration. They call for people to interact and therefore act. Welcome to Semiosis 101 Season 2's 11th semiotic video. If you've watched Semiosis 101 videos before, then you will already know I am David Wood. Season 2's semiotic theme is a semiotic Rosetta Stone, which is a metaphor to the unlocking and design essential translation of Charles Sanders Peirce's semiotic theory of semiosis. Sign action. Why do you need Semiosis 101? Peirce's writing and terminology is very... obtuse. In the last few Season 2 videos, I've been focusing on semiotically crafting the aesthetic to enhance connections with the intended audience. In this video, I focus on the question, how can semiotic science reinforce calls to action? Visual communication design, graphic and illustrated outcomes are not passive. They are created to a brief to communicate something to someone. How can we improve this? Hit subscribe and I will explain. Jorge Frescara describes what we do as visual communicators as behaviour changes. This is quite an elevating statement, one that lifts designers and illustrators' status from perceived decorationists to actual communicational facilitators. With great power comes great responsibility. Okay, let's put this into a humble context. Last week we discussed the aesthetic in a pragmatic context and demonstrated how to semiotically craft this from the iconic level of representation up. This was framed within a termination flow at both the macro analog level and the micro sign action level. At the micro level of pragmatic semiotic sign action semiosis, a communicational flows between the concept, its representation and its interpretation back to the concept. Pierce's terms are object, representament and interpretant. At the macro design level, there is a relationship between the client, the creative and the audience. We established that a binary relationship just between the client and the creative is incomplete communication. Sorry to say this, but visual communication is not art. There, I dropped the truth bomb. Of course, designers and illustrators can be artists as well as visual communication designers. It is all about intent. In 2008, Professor Simon Biggs, one of my PhD supervisors at Edinburgh College of Art, succinctly summed up the difference to me, which I have used ever since. He said, artists ask questions, designers solve problems. There may be many shared technical, artistic, philosophical and creative qualities, but designers and yes, illustrators, I was one once, were to a brief. That brief comes from a client. Let us avoid subjective, self-directed briefs and objectively, the designer illustrator needs to answer that brief. Many of us professionally used to just focus on that brief and come binary. The client wants this produced, so I will produce this. But did the intended audience for this actually want, need, desire this? Or did the intended audience actually want, need, desire that? With the emergence in the 1990s of interaction design as a discipline, all designers and illustrators began to be exposed to the needs of the audience. Experience design emerged. User-centered design emerged. People emerged. But how to design for people? you do not know. It is okay for big design agencies like IDEO and Apple who employ psychologists and social scientists to find out this information. But what about the individual creative or small agency who can't afford audience research? The answer to this is in plain sight. Semiosis. Pierce had philosophically influenced interaction design and those of us in visual communication design who were aware began to synthesize Pierce into our discipline. Do you want to know more? Check out for free the relevant chapters in my PhD available on the University of Edinburgh archive. I am quickly paraphrasing a lot of information here. So Pierce's semiotic theory of semiosis is different to to Sir's Bart's semiology. Semiology is dyadic, signifier signified. Pierce's semiosis is triadic, concept, representation, interpretation. Put in design essential terms. If concept aligns with the ask and needs of a client's brief, if representation aligns with the creator's visual outputs and aesthetic choices, then who does the interpretation? 
Yes, the target audience. But what do they interpret? One of the many similar comments I get asked by young creators getting to grips with this is, why? Why is a natural question. What the agenda behind why actually is, is not asking why interprets or why semiotics. It comes from a good hearted position, but one that undervalues their abilities or power to visually communicate. We've dealt with denotation briefly in past video. Let me simply sum up the perceived problem. If a client brief asks the creator to come up with an outcome to make people buy more tins of beans, why not just say, buy beans and be done with it. Bish, bash, bosh, job done. And illustrate a poster of a tin of beans with buy in big letters. Jobs are good. Denotation at its simplest. But do people want to buy more beans? Denotation is not what we are focused on here on Semiosis 101 when we discuss applying semiotic theory. We already know that target audiences are more sophisticated than a denotational level of direct visual communication. For a behavioural change to be enacted, as Frascara frames it, goes far beyond simple naked commercialism. Any piece of effective visual communication will provoke an action, whether this is intended or not. A great illustration is not just aesthetically wonderful to look at, it helps the intended audience to connotatively understand the themes of an article or to facilitate a page turn in a book to continue reading. A beautifully typeset page may offer the reader information in the form of words, but also the entire design can connotatively suggest richer narrative themes to support those words. This is why aesthetic decisions are always more than mere decoration. Aesthetic decisions of colour, shape, text, image, composition, hierarchy, proximity and tone can all be enhanced with semiotic science. The applied sign action semiosis, within the aesthetic grabs attention and allows the audience more time to discover richer levels of embedded meaning for themselves. The why question is more about the determination flow and the relationship between the intended audience the client wants, needs to connect with. We know people will not buy beans just because a poster tells them to. After all, we are people too and we are not that unsophisticated or gullible. Recently, I was talking to master's design students about basic graphic design tips to design their information posters about their work placements. I asked the postgraduate designers a question. I asked them to describe one piece of visual communication they walked past on their way into class. Put on the spot like that, the master's students could not remember one example of visual communication they had encountered since leaving their home. They realised they had encountered a lot of examples, but did not take any notice. It was all just visual noise. So how, as creators, do we achieve success if our outputs are always in direct competition in 21st century societies with other outputs and risking audience visual overloads? We reframe our visual communication task. We are not competing for everyone's attention all the time, nor can we be successful if we were. The client and their brief will target an audience. Creative can coolly, calmly and economically begin to create outputs to connect with that audience through simple, achievable, iconic steps. Do not need access to in-depth audience research to begin to do this. Before any visual communication output can enact a desired behavioural change in the target audience. Buy, sell, do this, do not, do that, go here, see this, read this, etc. The audience needs to perceive this thing, it's, a, it's an outcome, as something relevant to them. This perception is triggered through the iconic level of representation of the concept the client wants to communicate. Check previous Semiosis 101 videos as to what iconic means in the context of Semiosis. Within a chosen aesthetic to grab the attention of the audience, whether in graphic design or illustration outputs, the perception triggers are qualities that represent things the audience already associates with the thing the client wants. This information is found in the lived experiences of the target audience. This is social cultural in nature and can form the basic building blocks to success. To end this the 11th season 2 video, we can conclude by showing how this lived experience insight can suggest qualities to embed in your aesthetic. Firstly, we are all human. We all encounter the world each day. We all grow up within a dominant culture 
with its own cultural reference points. But we are also exposed to many other subcultural and cross-cultural visual stimuli. Some we like, some we do not. Looking at people's shared experiences within the remit of a particular target audience can begin to suggest clues to qualities that people will respond to. It is in examining the qualitative experiences that generally appeal to that audience that the iconic visual building blocks can be harnessed to reinforce the calls to actions. Come back next week as we'll go deeper in the next three videos into experience design. I am Dave Wood, a design educator and researcher, a published design author, and I've worked commercially as both a freelance illustrator and graphic designer. The guy behind the theory, Charles Sanders Peirce, was a philosopher, a mathematician, and a theorist. But he was not a creative. Each week on this Scout Scott Semiosis 101 YouTube channel, I will post at least one 10 minute explainer video on an aspect of Peirce's pragmatic semiotic theory. Each video will feature a take home piece of applicable semiotic theory, and they do interconnect to build up your understanding of semiosis. Each free Semiosis 101 10 minute video will use designer centric terms instead of theoretical language. As a fellow creative and a published design author, I have a link in the description to my Scout Scott website. If you're interested in reading my Semiotic Rosetta Stone academic writing, then you can visit my academia.edu link in the description. Any other books on piercing semiotics or design I have mentioned in the videos are also listed in the description. Check them out too. On the Semiosis 101 Substack Semiotic resource, I have support materials for both free and paid subscribers. There are full annotated reading lists, video transcripts, five minute reads, plus other goodies and exclusive Semiosis 101 merchandise. The Substack link is in the description. Thanks for watching. Check out the other Semiosis 101 videos, like and share them with your friends. And hit the bell and subscribe buttons to be notified when next week's free Semiosis 101 video is published. You can also follow Semiosis 101 on the socials for updates. It is Semiosis 101 on Instagram and Twitter. See you all again next week for more Semiosis 101 to help illustrators and designers to enhance your visual communication skills.